scoot a bar stool on carpet. It's hard. We are crafting on carpet, friends. I when we <laughs> moved into this office, we got to the land or we just said to the landlord, um, we're gonna just buy you more carpet when we move out. <laughs> Yeah. Crafting on carpet is not fun. Anyway, no. hopefully everyone is, is in now. We always have to give a little segue um, because our YouTube friends are a little slower than our Facebook friends. Um, but I think you guys are all here. How are you today? It is Wednesday. This is like our first normal scheduled week all summer, Rachel. Yeah. I know. Tanner will be here tomorrow, barring no catastrophic events. Um, so it only took us two months to get in our summer routine. <laughs> That's it. I feel like that's a record. I love that. That's great. Next week, all out of whack again. All again. out of whack again. Yeah. That's okay. And then, well, and then this weekend we have Summit. So yeah, yeah. that sort of throws things, but we're super excited about Summit. Rachel, is Summit still on sale? I did not even ask before. Uh, I assume so. I haven't heard otherwise. We're going to go with yes. And if um, you hear a rebuttal, say Becca said. Summit is on sale. Um, Becca said. Yeah. So if you haven't grabbed your summit ticket yet, Summer Summit is so much fun. We are super excited about it. And it is this Saturday and Sunday. Oh my gosh. T minus what? Oh. 72 hours? I don't know. I did the math in my head. It's probably wrong. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> it's not very far away. No. 10 amazing courses on crafts that you guys are absolutely going to love. They're going to help you get ready for fall. They're going to teach you some cool new techniques um, and just be super fun. We're doing lots of giveaways, guys. It's going to be uh, just a blast. We are going to miss Rachel. She'll be at the beach. I'll be on my way to the beach, which is yes. not nearly as exciting as being at the beach or as exciting as being here for a summit. So I'm it's really true. sad I'm missing one. It's my first summit I'm, I'm ever missing. So, yeah, but guys, like, you have Becca now. So, like, you don't even need me. It's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the same. It'll be so much fun, guys. I'm super excited. Anyway, uh, Rachel dropped a link for you guys. If you haven't gotten your tickets for Summit, click it, click it, click the link. Use code MAKE at checkout. Make sure you're using that code MAKE, M-A-K-E. Get $20 off and come craft li live-ish with us this weekend. So the videos are pre-recorded, but we are going to be live. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're going to be live. And <coughs> while we're live, we play you guys the pre-recorded video. So yes. I think it's live. It's still live. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, we're live with you, and you're live, and we're pre-recorded. Totally fine. Yeah. Amazing. Darla, hi. How are you? Hi from Texas. Shannon's Creations. Hello. How are you today? It's a good day, guys. We've been doing lots of crafts, so um, get excited about our August releases. We've been crafting up a storm the last two days, and I'm telling you, these <laughs> crafts for the August release are probably some of the cutest ones that we've ever made. Like, I, I, I'm just going to say it. I believe they are some of the cutest we've ever made. Uh, Rachel made this one today, and I swear to you, it looks like it is from Kirkland's. It's the cutest thing ever. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So get excited about that. The cut files are super cute. The fonts are super cute. I love the projects. <coughs> uh, Rachel, you're not going to be at Summit. Crystal, she will be I'm there not. in spirit. I will be, and yes. And she taught two amazing courses. Um... So she's sort of there, but not. And if I know Rachel, she can probably pop in and say hello. Oh, probably. Yeah. I'll be getting those special secret links like you all will get. And yes. hopefully be able to be live here and there and answer some questions. Or Miss Becca will text me quickly. Yes. Any questions that you guys have, and I'm happy to answer too. It'll be so fun, though, guys. Ten awesome classes that you're going to be able to just soak up all of the amazing information for. Megan, can you remind me of the times for both days of Summit? Um, Summit starts at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then it's generally five to six hours. It just sort of depends on um, how long we chit-chat, how many awesome questions you guys ask, that type of thing. I think the actual instruction per day is around four hours, and then uh, you know we'll just have the chit-chat and the giveaways and all that stuff. So five to six hours. Um, great question. Uh, are there any other questions about Summit that I can answer? I love talking about Summit, and I would love to answer any questions that you have about them. Hello, Miss Sarah. How are you? How is Tennessee? It is sort of a scorcher here in the East Tennessee. Yes. It's only 80, only 88 today, so... Yeah. Which is actually cooler than it has been. It's oh, been in yes. the 90s, which I, you guys know I hate heat. I don't deal well with it. 
And then next weekend, we're going camping. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm going to die. I'm going to roast. See, in the early morning and in the late evening, it's a good temperature. But the rest of the day is just kind of kind of miserable. Marla, how will we know what half for the class is? Um, do you mean what supplies you need for it or or what? Elaborate. In which case, elaborate. Yes. You guys get a super extra special, extremely long, lengthy, huge, detailed list of all the supplies with needed links. with links for every single one of our videos, yeah. which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, you'll be able to know exactly what to use for them all. Gracie, I'm so excited for Summit. It's my first one. You are gonna love it. Oh my gosh. It like there's a lot of hype about it because there should be. It's amazing. Yeah. Paige, I'm so excited for Summit. I've been a member for a month and I'm obsessed with everything. Hey, Paige, I'm so glad to hear you're enjoying the We're membership. so happy you're here with us. Fantastic. Yes, ma'am. All supplies last. Hello, hello, S sharp. Uh, Sarah says, oh my goodness, the thunder thunderstorms here are crazy. Uh, we haven't really had thunderstorms, but last night we did have a few rumbles of thunder. Well, we also had a friend over on Facebook, Miss Monica, that's oh, yeah. here in town that says, are you loving this thunder? So maybe we're missing something, Becca. Maybe, There's thunder right now? Maybe. I don't know if Miss Monica's here. I know she's in Tennessee. What's and her last Sarah uh, Vasquez. Okay. And then Miss Sarah, I know she's in She's here, not super close, but, but she's here. Yeah. So maybe we're wait. Maybe there's some storms. I love that come a thunderstorm. In. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm not. Because we like Makersville Learn headquarters. Our office here has the best uh, front porch ever, and so like I kind of just want to take my computer out there and work out there. But we'll see. Um, I don't know where I was going with any of that, so I'm just gonna Becca loves change storms. topics. Becca I loves do storms. Love, That's yeah, I do. yeah. Okay. Um. If there are no questions about Summit. Oh, we have one other great question. Yeah. Miss uh, Tamara, is the Summit okay for a true newbie? This is a good question. Okay, so it, our members can weigh in too because obviously we're going to say yes, but I honestly believe that it is because I believe that it's even better for a newbie than just a live or organic video because we teach them so in depth. Like That's true. it is, it's, it's, because it is pre-recorded, we can be very specific about the content that we include in those videos, mm -hmm. and we're very intentional about the content that we include as well. So um, we're very intentional about including every bit of the design space element in it, which honestly, when you're crafting, if you're a crafter, then the design space element is the hardest part anyway, just yeah. because you're getting used to the software yeah. and, and how everything works. So It's not like these... 10 projects are difficult, but the point is of the summit that they're different. We want yes. you guys to become well-rounded crafters and to be able to do things with a sewing machine and woodworking and uh, inks, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So we, it's not that we want to challenge you guys too much. We want to make sure that you guys are learning new things as you go. So even as a beginner, if you, you know, dive into this and you are still learning how to use your machine and everything, you can still use these skills every single day. And and since you get these videos forever and get can watch them over and over, you guys can watch them as many times as you need to in order to, you know, gain all of that information if we go a little too fast for your pace or something like that. So that's a good perk as well. And in my opinion, like Summit is especially good for a new person because it does open up so many different crafting options for you. Um, so it's not just we're, we're making five print and cut projects we're making it, it it's so diverse it kind of gets your feet wet with so many different things i think that's really good yes i think as a new crafter you would not feel overwhelmed um and if you did for some reason you can rewind it and watch it again like it, it's it's good like the point of summit is to teach you and so we're very intentional about that great question yeah and marla said so we will be able to look at the classes afterwards yes you will. So you'll get a link. Um, I think last year it was, it was, was it the next day or a couple of days later? Something like that. Yeah. It's quick. It's really quick. You'll yeah. get a link so that you, uh, with high def quality videos and all that stuff that you can access forever. Um, so yeah, you can rewatch as many times as yeah. you want. And you can even watch the lives again. Like if you want to see the chit chat and you want to kind of experience the day as we did, yeah. you can rewatch those on YouTube as well. Um, or like Becca said, you can have the individual HD classes, just yes. whatever you want to do for sure. Uh, Paige, and I saw that you answered, but I want to touch on it. Do you know which summit includes Tanner's frame class? I thought about purchasing the summit instead of just the course. So there are two frame classes. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first one that we use the most, which are the miters, 
weird edged um, frames. Rachel is correct. I think it is fall 2018. There's also the second one uh, where we do a couple of different framing um, I ideas and techniques, and that is in Spring Summit. Of uh, this year. Of I think. this year. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. So just depending on which one you're looking for. Uh, how do we join on Saturday for the summit? So you guys will get a link. I don't. Is it the night before or the morning of? I think it's the night before. The day before, you guys will get a special email. So definitely the day before, look out for your email. If you do not have it, um, like by dark, wherever you are, the day before the summit, email us and we'll make sure that we give you that special link. And you'll click that link and that's kind of you the hub. It. That's mm -hmm. where everybody will be chatting, yeah. chatting away and waiting for the summit to start. Um, Shannon, do you guys ever do in-person craft shows? Not that we'll be attending any craft shows right now anyway, but for the future reference, we do not currently do any in-person craft shows. Although I have talked to Tanner, I think it would be super fun to do some sort of convention and like kind of host a convention because we are about 45 minutes from Pigeon Forge. There are huge convention centers there. I think it would be really neat to rent that out and invite everybody to come meet everybody. That's a like pipeline dream. There's no, nothing in the works for that, but I think, I think you should email him and let him know you want to do that. Uh, Cause I think it would be so much fun when COVID is over. I think it would be a, a great, like, welcome back to reality. Let's get started and, you know, be friends and all that fun stuff. How much is this? Marla, great question. So Summit is, oh, my my watch thinks I'm talking to it. How much is Summit? It's 197? one. It's one seventy seven with your discount. So yes. with the discount code, yeah. and that's Becca did the math on this, not me, but we love to share it with you. That's less than eighteen bucks per class. And you guys, if you want the frame course like we were talking about, that sucker is ninety seven dollars for one class for right. the for one class. Right. So you guys are getting a steal with less than eighteen bucks per class, and there's ten of them. So that's awesome. Yes. Uh, any other questions? Not that I see. Let me go check. You guys Facebook. are full of amazing questions. I'm super excited. I love when you're this interactive. Um, okay, I think that's it for now. So yeah. just pop in questions. Obviously, Rachel will interrupt me if I need to be interrupted. We are going to be doing a charcuterie board today, guys. Uh, oh, I got my ticket for summit. How do I log in for Saturday? You'll get an email. Yes. Yeah, yeah we did answer that. Um, okay, so we're doing the charcuterie board. We featured this several. I think I made this at the beginning of our stay at home in April. So it's been quite a while. Um, but this is a super fun project. I'm really excited to do it with you guys. Um, who here does not know what a charcuterie board is? Let me know. I'll explain it if I need to. I still ask Becca how to spell it often. Yes, so that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Uh -huh. yeah. We had, well, it's like a it's like a running joke in my group of friends who we do charcuterie boards with to just like botch the saying of it as much as we can. And oh yeah, yeah, that's just a fun an everyday game. conversation. That's a fun yeah. game. Yeah. Um, my godbrother, who's like one of the smartest guys I know, is particularly wonderful at saying it <laughs> really bad. The funny part is, is that he really doesn't know how to say it. So oh no, yeah, it's good. It's good. What is it? A charcuterie board. Okay, so um, I didn't know either, guys. Let Don't me see. feel bad. Where's my phone? Guys, you have to follow this Instagrammer, Rachel. Um, if you can give me that over here. Sure. Let's. Uh, I found out about it. My friend Julie, who is an amazing hostess, um, is obsessed with them because they're super good. And you can be super creative with them. So it's like a, it's a tray for food. And traditionally, it's like meats and cheeses and nuts and that sort of stuff. Um, but this lady called the Reluctant Entertainer um, makes these massive, ginormous, look at this. Look at this spread of food. Um, let me see if I can find one that's more traditional. Um... So it's a wooden it's like, food it's a board. Wood, yeah, it's a wooden board, and then you just arrange the food on it really pretty. But, guys, she is insane, and she does themed boards. So she'll do, like, a dessert board or a taco board or um, one specifically for hamburgers or, uh, like, this is a – yeah, this is the hamburger one. Um, uh -huh. Right? Or she'll do – this is the birthday one that her daughter did for her, and it has, like, donuts and all kinds of amazing stuff. But she has this whole blog dedicated to charcuterie boards, and she has a book that's amazing, and I'm just obsessed with her, and I love doing these. Tanner and Courtney came over this weekend, and we made charcuterie boards at the house. So uh, follow her if you don't. It's super fun to do that. But 
A charcuterie board is like basically any um, wood board, any wood serving tray, any serving tray, it doesn't have to be wood, um, that you can display your food on. And it's just, you know, fun. If you like to host people uh, for parties or showers or dinners or whatever, then you should also own a charcuterie board. And we're making one. We're making yep. a custom one today. Yep. Um, so let's talk supplies really quick if there's no qu- buffet on a cutting board. Elizabeth, yep. you're right. Pretty much. And what I love about it is that it doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason for like what a charcuterie board specifically is. It doesn't have to be a, a certain shape or a certain uh-uh. size. No. I mean, you can have one that's a t- as big as a tabletop and be like, here's a charcuterie Mine is board. The, I have the one that she pictures and it's yeah. from uh, hmm. Pier 1. It's from Pier 1. Pier 1. Uh, and it's huge. And she recommends that you do one with a lip, which totally makes sense so that it doesn't like slide off and yeah, everything. Yeah. But if you're just doing like... Not a stuff. giant yeah. one that you would have to have two people to <laughs> pick Hold, up. Yeah. Then you don't have to have that. So that's why I've done this. Would be fun with a fondue night. It absolutely would. Um, Melting Pot actually does a charcuterie board now as an appetizer option. So Becca loves fondue. I do. I do. Who doesn't? I don't want to know because we might not be able to be friends. <laughs> no, I think you're right, Becca. Let's just better. Wait, Some things are better listen. left. Don't let us know if you don't like melted cheese and melted chocolate. Oh, don't know. There's something wrong. Unless, of course, you had some like aversion because of a lactose food intolerant or yeah. something. Yeah. In which case, we kid it. Uh, I want to join the summit so bad. Too bad it's not the next weekend. Oh, I hate that. I'm so sorry. Hey, I'm the sorry. next one's going to be fun, too, yeah. though. We love yeah. our fall summits because we get to get in all the Christmas spirit. Tamara, oh my God, I want to move to the Smoky, Smoky Mountains. Mountains, but my husband won't. Mm. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I'm telling it you, if you have any issues with allergies, steer clear, but it's gorgeous. Right, Absolutely Megan, who love doesn't this. love yeah. dipping everything in cheese? Okay, back to the project. Sorry. You guys are so fun today. I don't even want to craft. I just want to talk to you. Um, back to the project. Let's talk over supplies really quick. If you want to give us that overhead camera, sure, we'll can. go through them. Um, we have our actual board, which I have one pre-made here. I didn't even bring the finished one. Do you want me to go grab it? No, I'll go get it. It's totally fine. It. They'll see it at the end. Are you sure? Yep. Cool. Thank you, though. Um, I have a piece of wood that is, and you can't even see this because I'm so zoomed in. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, okay. Got it. Uh, it is nine and a half inches wide by 24 inches long. 24 inches. So it's a good size one. Um, and that we have stained and painted. And I'm going to show you the technique for doing that. The stain that we used for this project is our, I don't know if it's our favorite now or our second favorite or what, but it's, it's a top contender. Our Minwax Early American Stain. And then I used, in the one that's pictured for the thumbnail, I used a dark gray um, acrylic paint. This one that I did right here on the table is black, so either one that you want. I think I linked both paints, I'm not sure. Um, so black acrylic paint. You'll need a paintbrush that is sort of a crummy paintbrush. You don't want like the nylon ones that are super, um, uh, yeah, just, you want it to be coarse. You want, yeah, like yeah. get an old crummy one that's coarse because we're going to do a dry brush technique with it and you don't want it to be too fine or polished. And um, Becca, Miss yeah. Caitlin said, where is your charcuterie board from? I made it. It's made, homemade yes, with love. Yes, I'm going to tell you all about it. Okay, so I did say just a second ago, this is a 9 by 24 inch piece of wood. It was not 9 by 24. I cut it down to 9 by 24. Um, and I stained it and painted it. And then we put these little feet on it. That so guys, cute. look at those. Look how cute they are. Do you guys know what these are? They're candlestick holders. Yes, they are. You can get them. They're wood pile candlestick holders that you can get from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of five and they are $4.99 regular price. So you can get those discounted. And then I didn't bring the E6000 in here. Whoops. I just use E6000 um, to glue them onto the charcuterie board. So, super easy, super fun to do that. Um, supplies, we also have gloves here just to keep our hands nice. We are using HTV, white HTV today. You can totally use regular vinyl for this project. I have already cut it out and weeded it. 
Um, but guys, I'm going to tell you, this font is one of my favorite fonts. It's really beautiful. But if I had tried to weed this with regular vinyl, it would have been horrible. So that's one reason I chose HDB. If you're going to use another font that is thicker and easier to, um, to weed, definitely use uh, regular or HDB, whichever you prefer. Um, so we're gonna be doing that. I have my little mini easy press that I love um, that's gonna help us out with this project. And then we have, and I probably won't seal this one today, but you can seal it with poly acrylic or polyacrylic, excuse me. Um, this is just the clear satin polyacrylic. Um, it is water-based, and if you're going to be using this for food, which it's a charcuterie board, so you will, then you need to let it cure for 30 days. Once it's cured for 30 days, the FDA considers that food safe, and you can use it um, with your food. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think that's I think that's it for supplies. Do we have any questions I need to answer? Um, I answered one of them, and then Miss Beverly said, "Becca, you are just so creative." Oh, thank you. She is. It's true. I try. Hi from Arizona. We're going to be a hundred and a uh, hundred and six degrees. Do I would even, like. I, I, uh, do you have special air conditioning units? Because like it's only. 90 here and all of our air conditioning units are struggling mine cannot get it below like 75 in the house mm. Mine's and actually here good. I'm, here is struggling too yeah maybe it it's is. just old houses though um uh, i'm gonna take this off i have a new watch band guys look how cute my new watch band is it's thin and i love and it and it has two clasps it, yeah what? it's from amazon but i don't want to get stain on it so i'm gonna take it off pardon me i should have done it before him um also, look at my cool tan I have. Oh, that's cool, Becca. I'm Ooh, so neat. Rocking that Apple Watch tan. Right. Um, you do not have to paint the wood. Or, yeah, you can totally just stain it and leave it. I'm just going to show you this technique. I actually just like, it sort of looks marbled and aged, and I love that. So that's why I did it. But it's if gorgeous. you prefer just stained or just painted, then absolutely. Do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, it's just personal preference. Like. Okay. Excuse me. Um... Let's go over into design space if there are no other questions. Um, and we'll get this started. Get this party started. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm trying to think here. I'm just going to start a brand new project because I think it's going to get laggy here. Generally what I do is, is open the project that I already have. And... Uh, We'll try it. We'll try it. If it gets laggy, then I will start a new one. I like to reference it, especially since I don't have the finished project here. Okay, so what we're going to do to start is grab a basic shape. You guys know we love this. It is our absolute, I would say in our top five tips for designing um, with your Cricut and designing a design space. I say top three tips. Like top this three. is so, it's sizing vital. in general yeah. is so important for the mm -hmm. professional and, you know, success of your projects. I say top three. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I sort of agree. Anyway, grab a basic shape over here on the left. We'll grab the square. And then, like I said earlier, actually, you know what? Let me make sure. I think it's nine in nine and a quarter you guys know when you buy pieces of wood and it's like a two by four it's not actually a two by four they sort of lie to you about it which i don't know it erases my trust in humanity when they can't just be straight about the dimensions right uh, so we have this and we're going to go up to the top um unlock that size ratio make the width 24 inches because i cut that so it actually is 24 inches and then make the height 9.25 inches. So now this is a representation of our char charcuterie board. And then we can size everything on top of it and know that it's going to fit perfectly on our charcuterie board when it is cut out. So I'm a weirdo and like to change things to the correct color so that I can see. So I just went up to the top and changed that color. And now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start in the center, the center design. Um, make it and then I'll make the, the sides. You can do it either way that you want though. So I'm just gonna grab a text box over here on the left hand side and I'm going to put in an O. An O, not a parentheses. And we'll drag it down here. Let me move this back down. I don't know why we got moved up. Okay, so this font is worthy. It's a Makers Gonna Learn font. Guys, if you are not a member of Makers Gonna Learn, run 
not noteworthy, worthy. My goodness. Uh, run and get your membership. It is amazing, you guys. Apparently, worthy is not on here. Well, Becca, you what did you say earlier? What did you that. say? I did say that. Okay, I thought I loaded it. That's very interesting. Did you X out Design Space after did. you did it? Of course, I did. Oh. See, it's right there. Then okay. just X out Design X Space out. again, then I guess. I'm X out. Okay, so one thing that we see a lot, and it's a fantastic not a problem, but I, like I love answering it. Um, when you are loading fonts, especially makers going to learn fonts onto your computer, you have to install them on your computer. So your actual computer. So any other software that you might be using on your computer, also you can use those fonts like Word or uh, do people even use Word anymore? I don't know. Uh, notepads or your emails or whatever. Um, so once you install the font on your actual computer, then it is available in Design Space where, there we go. But you have, if you already have Design Space open, then you have to uh, X out of it and reopen it. So that's what we're doing here. Hopefully it will work now. Let's see, grab a text box there. Oh, and then we're looking for worthy. There it is. I don't know, a little bit glitchy, no big deal. Okay, so let's zoom out here so that we can see better what we're doing. And then I'll have to grab another, well, I can duplicate this. I'm gonna just duplicate this one that we already have. So I'll click on it, right click, right click, and press duplicate. And it's not working. There we go. Okay, so we're bringing it down here. And then we'll zoom in so that we can see better. And we can grab our O at this point bring it down here into the middle of this we're going to right click and press bring to front or send to front so that it is on top of this um, charcuterie um, board and then we'll just drag and drop to size it to the size that we want now you could if you wanted to highlight both of those layers so drag and drop to select both of them and then go up to the top where it says align and press center like that. And that centers it vertically and horizontally and now it's smack dab in the middle there which is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna grab these um, cute little embellishments and these are also a Maker's Gonna Learn cut file. They are, I think it's called Laurel Wreath or something. Um, but if you just search Laurel, L-A-U-R-E-L on our site then you can uh, get those. Uh, Rachel probably has linked to those too. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, it, that's correct. You're correct. But there we have that. And then we'll just insert this. And as you can see, it has several different embellishments there. So all we're going to need to do uh, is ungroup over here in the top right. And then I'm just going to delete all these pieces that I don't need. Um, so I can do that. I could like, let me, let me move this over here to the side. I'm going to just drag and select all of those. We don't want to, ugh. I was too close. Drag and select those, and then I'll delete. Oh, I got rid of one of my things. Oh my goodness, I'm a train wreck today, friends. You are not. That's okay. Okay, so we have these two selected. We're gonna delete them. I'm just pushing the delete button on my keyboard. Guys, I'm trying to be like super detailed about this because um, I realize that we do this all the time. And um, a lot of times I'm clicking and not really saying what I'm doing. And for people who are new, I, I totally understand how that can be confusing. So if I say a million times, I'm just pushing my delete button or whatever, uh, I'm just trying to be super, super helpful, helpful for our new people. Okay, so I deleted those pieces that I don't need. I don't even know what that is. And then I'm going to take this cut file over here and then size it. Um, to fit around my, oh, and honestly, I think it just looks really good like that, so I'll probably just leave it. Then I'm gonna duplicate this. So I right-clicked and I'll press duplicate, and then I'm gonna go up to the top where it says arrange. Oh, align. No, flip. And press flip vertical. And as you can see, it flipped it perfectly for me, and then I can just put it right on top just like that. And then again, if I wanted to select all three of these, uh, well, let's group these together really quick. We'll group that. And Becca, how did you group that so quickly? Did you press the special button? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a great question. Fantastic. So I have this clicked 
and I have this clip. So both of those are, are selected together and you can see over here in the panel, they are both highlighted. So they're selected. And then I'm just going to press group mm -hmm. up in the top right panel. You can also click and hold your shift key yes. while selecting different layers, especially if it's a little bit more difficult. If your computer or design space thinks you're thinks that like Becca was choosing the wood instead of one of those, you can use your shift key to select multiple layers, which is good too. Right. Um, what I was going to say is once you group those, then you can select these. I actually like the placement, so I'm not going to do anything, but you could select these and then go back up to like your align tools and make sure that they're aligned properly. Uh, but you would definitely want those grouped together because if they weren't grouped together, then these would overlap each other if like you went to center them. So that's why you want to group them like that. Uh, now what we're going to do is grab another text box and then we're going to write in Oaks family. And then we're going to grab up at the top under fonts, we're going to go to uh, Betty B. I think you meant to do that in some lowercase. I did, you're right. Totally did. And of course it's not going to... And you're in Betty B. Why right? is it doing that? Ochres. Ochres. Guys, uh, my husband's cousin just had a baby yesterday. And Aww, congrats. Yeah, she is originally an Oaks and married to Spencer, but they named her baby girl Oakley. Oh. After Oaks, and I think that's the cutest thing ever. Love it. So Love cute. it. Anyway, okay. Um, so we have this super cute script font. Um, what I want to do, and you'll see up here, generally with a script font, I... I want to kern it so that all the letters are touching. That's like a good rule of thumb. Um, it's one of, uh, the, one of the quickest ways that you can ruin design, and I don't want to step on toes, but one of the quickest ways that you can ruin a really good design is by not kerning your letters well. It's 100% true. This particular font, does, because it looks handwritten, does okay um, sp spaced out, but not this much. So I have it all um, selected and I just want to go up to the top where it says line spacing and letter spacing and I want to decrease that spacing. Um, so again, I, it doesn't have to touch if I wanted it to touch. Um, this font, you would probably need to go in and ungroup it and then do it manually. Um, so I want to like, drag this and select this and get it closer to the F. Uh, and if I had done that up at the top with the arrows, goodness gracious, why will it not let me select? Make if, it uh, closer for you. If I had done it up at the top with the arrows, then um, it, w it still wouldn't have gotten close enough. So that's why I'm ungrouping and just manually moving these. And if I did want them touching, I could totally just pull them over to do that. Uh, it just depends, you know, on what look you're going for. Go ahead and um, make that the screen bigger for everybody to see a little bit easier Fantastic. for you. Fantastic. Will do. There I don't know how you're doing that with the screen so far away from you. I'm blind as a bad well, guy. It looks like trash. Yeah, the eye's not even touching over there. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Um, and then if, you know, if we wanted to touch here, you can do that. Just whatever your preference is. Um, make it make it look beautiful. There we go. How do we feel about that, Rachel? Are you? I mean, the E and the S aren't touching, but I just don't know. Like my handwriting, my personal handwriting is so weird. I never really know what's normal anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna select all of them and group them again so that um, I don't have to go back and change the spacing again. Um, then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And zoom out a little bit more. Uh, there we go. Are there any questions? I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, no, no okay. questions. Everybody seems to be doing great, which is awesome. Fantastic. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to do is I can go ahead and make this bigger so that we can see it. And then, uh, you know, I think I used click clack for this and I did not even link it. That's okay. Um, we're also going to use click clack for the and then the date. So type in the click clack might not be on for it would be sacrilegious. Oh, there she is. Sacrilegious. <laughs> we have to use click clack. Yeah, we do. Okay. 
So we're making that a little bit, uh, we're kerning the letters there to make it a little bit smaller. And then we will bring it over here and let's make it a little bit smaller there. And then I wanna do um, the same thing. I wanna grab another text box and then type in 3307, our wedding anniversary. And then we can make it a little bit smaller and bring it over here. That looks good. And then what I wanna do, I want this to be in the center. I want all of these to be centered together. So I'm highlighting all of them, all three layers by dragging and dropping. Then I'm gonna press align and then center horizontally. Oh, it didn't even move oh, that much. Becca. Look at that. So perfect. We'll move it down just a little bit there. And then the only other thing that we need to do is grab our accent. So um, in our Maker's Gonna Learn membership, I think I started saying this earlier and then I just got sidetracked because that's how my brain works. Um, you have access to all sorts of amazing cut files. Um, and these cut files are some of them. We have tons of accents that are available to our yearly and monthly members. Um, if you like these fonts that we're using, and, uh, you do need to be a yearly member in order to use those. Uh, I'm sure Rachel has dropped the link. If you like our cut files, like our fonts, like what we do, think that you could benefit from an amazing community of crafters um, and the education and everything that we offer, then become a member. We would love to have you guys. Um, so if you have any specific questions about our membership, if we had any newbie, newbies, newbies, I haven't even looked um, to really see. If you're new here, this is your first time viewing or even your first week viewing give me a thumbs up or a hi and let me know we love um, to welcome newbies yes we do okay so i have um i used these forever ago and i happen to remember the name of the file so i'm gonna just search for the specific file um accents 13 and 13 is the number um of accents in this collection so there might be actually accents underscore 15 and all of that tons of accents that are available in our membership um, so again I'm just gonna press insert and then I am going to ungroup and get rid of these pieces up here that I don't need so um, I could drag and fight with it like I did earlier or I can just select each one and press delete like this just like that and we are gravy you can also contour out there are so many different ways to do things here in design space um, so now what I need to do is just take this guy over here size him down a little bit just like this and then I'm going to duplicate so I can right click and press duplicate and then I want to go up to the top where it says flip and press flip horizontal just like that and I'm going to bring this one over here and rest him there then I'm finished with that. So now what I want to do is select all of those and group them together so that when I uh, move it around and rotate it, then I um, have all of them selected at one time. So I've, I've rotated it that way. I can also rotate up here in the top. Uh, I want to make it 90 degree, 90 degree rotation, just like that. <laughs> Look at that. I haven't saved it basically perfectly. Go me. Go me. Uh, <laughs> and then what I want to do is just duplicate this entire grouped um, cut file design design over here. And I can rotate it. I can flip it. Whatever I want to do. So let's. And I have to read Paige's comment. She let's says, best decision ever. The membership has helped my mood so much with this crazy world we're Aww. living in. I love having Makers and Alert as the sunshine in my day. That's so sweet. I love that. You guys are the best. Okay, friends, so we have this designed. How quick was that? It's total. like, we have, you know, we use three fonts and two cut files, and look how adorable this is. You guys can do this. That's what I love. Like, I love that we offer so many cut files for Makers Gonna Learn. We have over 4,000 cut files that we offer. But because of the fonts, you can customize so many different things. Like, you could, like, I, I for one, like, generally will take a cut file and customize it with a font. 99% of the time, I would say. I think Rachel's the same way. We just love to customize with fonts. Yeah, um, I really like. Yes, yeah, really and like so fonts. our yearly members are... Um, Able, able to do that. Okay, so um, suggestion. When you are ready, once you like everything and are ready to click make it, first of all, since you're using script font and the letters are touching, you, you're gonna have to weld those. Um, 
because if you don't weld them, that it will cut out each individual letter. Instead of being one solid cut, they'll be uh, cut individually and you don't want that. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to um, select this one, press weld. Select this one and press weld. Just like this. And then I'm gonna, uh, I don't even know, if, I'm gonna weld that one just because I like to, I like things to be, pieces like that and then I'll let me get rid of this just like this now we're gonna hit make it and we could have welded all of these together um, if you love the placement and are afraid that you're never gonna get them spaced correctly then you could weld them all together um, and cut them out and then place them with your transfer sheet that way the problem is you're gonna have a lot of wasted um, um, HTB in the middle that you're that you will be pulling out so uh, what you're gonna do is press make it here is my trick that I want to teach or tell you guys uh, and yeah I think it will work on this one um, you see it wants to cut it out on two mats and it totally doesn't need to cut it out on two mats um, so what I did was just trick the system and go up to my mat size and press 12 by 24 instead and then even then, look, we've got all of this that would be wasted, um, wasted HTV. So what I did, you can manipulate these so that they are cut out um, more in a manner that you want. So I think, I think we're good there. Um, let's rotate this a little bit. I'm trying to remember, yeah, if I've got my, I do, okay. I was gonna say, if I have my sizing the same as last time, then I can fit all of this up here. But look, now we can cut this all out on um, one piece that is 10 inches or less. What? Instead of two separate pieces and on two separate mats. We don't have to load twice. We don't have to, you know, Perfect. Cut, cut all that. So you can, def there's definitely room for manipulation. I think most of the time, Design Space is pretty good about, um, placing your cut files on the mat to get, you know, the, the most out of your piece. Although sometimes there's definitely room for, for improvement. And I feel like this is one. Um, we're using HTV, so make sure you mirror your image by clicking this little button over here on the left. You can see now it is backward, which is exactly what we want. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I think that actually changes a little bit of this when I do that. Uh, it does. So uh, after you mirror, just make sure that um, you can probably rotate the this. one on the left and then rotate that one as well. Oh yeah, you got it. Just because it's backwards, anyways, so that, that way it'll be like the same, maybe. I don't know. I don't oh know. nope. Hold on, where I think it went in there. I don't know. I don't know what happened. No, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you guys get the idea. You can manipulate these for sure. Um, and get, you know, more out of your, that's, that's even better than the other one. So we, I can still do that. It's still less than 12, 12 inches. Um, anyway, so do that, press continue, um, connect to your machine and then select iron on as your material. You'll be using your fine point blade. Um, let's see here. Iron on, everyday iron on. There we are. It was favorited and I didn't even see it. Okay, so now uh, at this point we would load our mat and let it cut out, but um, the cuts on this took a little bit of time, so I definitely wanted to do that beforehand for you guys um, so that I'm not wasting your time. So we have this right here, already cut out, already weeded, and it will be ready for us in just a second. Um, let's go over here. I'm, I was going to stain this, but I don't really think you guys need to know how to stain this. I think you're very intelligent and can do that. Um, so we have our early American, like I said, I stained the wood piece and the little candlestick feet uh, with the early American. And I'm gonna use this piece of wood to help demonstrate the dry brush wood technique that I do. Um, there are so many different ways to do different paint techniques, so feel free to do it however you like it. Um, what I'm gonna do is first of all put some gloves on here so I don't ruin my mani. Mani? My mani, my manicure. 
Um, have I missed any questions I need to address? I don't think so. Okay. You've been knocking it out of the park, though, Becca. It's what kind great. of wood? Okay. This wood? Or Probably the one that you use for the actual one. charcuterie board. Um, you can't really, really see the grain in this because I've done so much paint on it. I actually don't know what kind of wood this is. My dad would be very disappointed. He has been in the woodworking industry for... So, like, could your dad years. just kind of walk around, like, Home Depot and just point at all the different types of wood? Every single one. Wow. It's annoying. What a, what a life skill to have. Literally, he's been in it for over 40 years. It's, wow. Yeah. It's pretty... Incredible. Mad I didn't even tell you he dad. got me a new kitchen table. Did I tell you that? Did he build you a he new kitchen table? He built me a new kitchen table and I have to refinish I've got to see it. it. You need to send pics. Well, I haven't finished it yet because it's been so stinking hot yeah, that ooh. I don't want to go out in the garage and do that. No one can blame you. No. Okay, so we have this. I did pre-stain it so that it was dry. Um, honestly, you don't have to wait that long um, in between. You could use a heat gun to dry it enough. Uh, to do what we want to do. So then what I want to do is grab a little bit of this paint. This does not take much at all. In fact, I may just use the lid here, the stuff that's in the lid. Um, and then I'm just going to get a tiny, tiny bit on my brush and then I'm going to kind of paint off of it so that it's super dry. And I'm just going to kind of lightly here and there. You could go with the grain. That's what I did on this big piece. In fact, I should have done that on this, but I'm not. So um kind of just here and there and then what i like to do is grab a paper towel or something else and then sort of smear it does that make sense we're sort of smearing here and i may have done yeah uh, you kind of want to work in one section at a time instead of doing all over like i did because it starts to dry Oh, before, it draws in like yeah, 10 seconds. Before draws. you can get to it. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. So we've got that. We're just going to kind of smear here. And you can see uh, we're taking away most of the pigment. Um, and sort of, it almost looks like stain the way that we're doing it. So just wipe off. Again, guys, you can, there are so many different ways, so many different techniques for painting. Um, so feel free to do however you like the best. There we go. Some corners there. Get it in there. And like I said, this does look better if you're going with the grain of the wood. It looks more natural. I did the very same thing earlier with my little pumpkins. Yes. I had one that I stained going with the grain and the other one I had cut the same way, but I had my um wood on the mat differently so it cut it in a different direction uh -huh. so i did the same thing okay. still still looks good yeah. but when one is right next to the other you can tell which one does look more natural yeah then what i do is go in with my stain the same color stain that i had let's open this up here oh almost there there we go Guys, who was watching? Was that live that one day that Tanner dropped that stain all over the floor? Wasn't that like, I feel like that was like a big deal. Like, I feel like that was Black Friday or something. Or a, so, was it a live? I don't remember. Guys, it's still, probably still there. I'm suddenly reminded of that and hoping that I don't also do that. Anyway, then I'm, I'm just going to take the same uh, napkin that I used to kind of smear with. And then I'm going to go in and sort of just smudge these lines, these paint lines with my stain again just drying it off really good here and there and you don't want to do it all over because you just want certain parts of it uh, to be darker not the entire thing so it just sort of blends those in a little bit more like that you kind of get the idea this looks a little more zebra-y than i like because i didn't go with the grain of the wood this is this is the ideal outcome so beautiful i wish i could get a whole shot it's hard anyway um i recommend if you haven't done this painting technique before get some scrap pieces of wood um and practice it before you actually do it on something that you care about um i don't know rachel did you practice before or did you were you 
I practice blazing in there. I practice on I practice on a part of mine that wouldn't be seen. Okay. So if you guys have something like this that every piece is going to be seen, then I would practice on a different type of wood. Or like if you're making your charcuterie board, I would practice on one side. So stain both sides, and then you'll be able to flip it if it doesn't look that good. I would definitely practice though. Yeah, don't put all that work into it. No. Just to uh, to have a little mishap there. Okay. Um, Rachel, what yes. setting are we filling for the wood today? Three or three fifty? I did my wood earlier on just three hundred, but it's whatever you want to do. We'll start at three and see what happens. Um, let me zoom out so we can see a little better. Okay, so once you have everything stained, everything is dried. Uh, I personally recommend that you dry, let, at least let dry overnight if you're staining and painting before you do HDV. Um, you could probably get away with doing it before then, but I, I don't know. Uh, it, if it's not good and dry, then it will pull, pull the moisture of the stain and the paint out and it, the transfer of HDV is just not as seamless. Um, so let that dry. Also, if you were gluing these on, like I said, I use E6000, so I just applied the E6000 to the rim of the candlestick and put them on the corners and let it set overnight as well. Um, and then it was good and ready for today. So we are ready. Let me clear out some stuff here. And Miss Elizabeth says, is that true wood? I don't know if she means like, is it legit wood or if true wood is a brand? I don't really know. But this is real wood, yes. She if that's would. What, if that's what you're asking. Okay. So, what I want to do, I think, is place this guy first. Let me see if I can get you up here. There we go. And you'll see my family is missing the Y because I don't know what happened. Um, but I cut it out individually. So after I was finished cutting this out, um, I just cut just the Y in the correct size. So no fear, friends, we've got it right here. We're gonna cut it out and just place it so that it can all be happy together. And guys, please do not uh, recut the entire thing if no. you do that. Do exactly what Becca did and just slice out what you need after duplicating and saving it, of course. You want to save the entire thing again. But as we know, weld welding cannot be undone, so she couldn't just simply kind of ungroup that. So just slice it out and just do the letter you missed. So, and you'll see, like there would be some overlap there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is some, um, the transfer tape from the L and everything is over this way. So make sure that you're not laying this on top of, like if you had to, to piece it, make sure you're not laying this on top of this piece of transfer tape because it's not gonna adhere to the wood. Yeah. Honestly, that seems very like, duh, why would I not? But I've, for whatever reason, not paid attention and totally made that mistake before. Okay, so we've got that placed. I'm gonna place this other one on the other end in the exact same way. This one is not missing the Y. I was a little less negligent with it. Less negligent, no. Things happen, <laughs> things happen. There we go. And then we're gonna place our O with our laurel accents in the center. And this table is up higher than I can comfortably see, so I'm just gonna kinda eye it in Hope for the best. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So make sure it is down really good. Uh, because I have stained this and let it dry for a good long time, I don't necessarily need a Teflon sheet over it. If for some reason you had to rush and try to um, do, you know, apply HGV to a piece of stained wood that, uh, stained or painted wood that you don't think had a ton of time to dry, you would want a Teflon sheet or something like that so that uh, the Easy Press isn't kind of removing some of the stain and paint. But because it's good and dry, I don't think I need it. So I'm just going to um, start in the middle and move around a little bit. This particular 
um, Easy Press was designed to move. I know uh, when you guys think, if you're familiar with the traditional Easy Presses, uh, you don't move those at all. It's a lay it down and leave it alone type thing, but this is made to be moved around. So um, you can go pretty slowly if you want to. I recommend starting in the center of the design and then sort of pushing out. You see what I'm doing there? Kind of pushing out like that. And then I'll do the same on this side, just like this, and then go toward the bottom. And just, you're looking for bubbles, friends. You are looking for bubbles underneath that transfer, um, tape, paper, whatever you wanna call it. And when you see the bubbles, then it is pretty much good to lift up. Um, I like to, to wait a little bit until it's a little bit cooler, uh, so to peel cool, because we've said it over and over again, HTV is designed traditionally to be used with fabric that has fibers, and so the adhesive with the HTV um, adheres to those fibers, and that's what helps it stick longer, or it helps it stick, helps it stay. Um, and since wood is not fibrous like material, um, you want to let it cool a little bit before you start peeling up so that it doesn't come up with your transfer tape. Is this food safe or have to put something on it? Great question. I did answer with oh, a link you? and everything okay. too, but you can totally verbally talk yeah, about it because it's a good it. point. Um, as is, it not necessarily, and I would not... Um, wash it and all of that stuff just because it's not gonna hold up that well um polycrylic or other wood finishers that dry clear like a, a clear film um after they cure for 30 days this is fda regulations after they cure for 30 days they are considered food safe um so that is a great question. And we actually get that question a whole lot. We do. I'm actually gonna film a whole video about it. <laughs> about it. So there are other things that you can do it with too, like you know, waxes and whatnot. This is not wanting to stick down. You also gotta remember to let it cool. That's yeah. not just a rule for Becca, but for lots of people. Um, just like she was saying, because the HTV does not have anything to adhere to, the only thing that helps it adhere to the wood is when it cools. Um, yeah. I'm going to crank it up a notch and see if that helps. Um, would it be okay to use a larger easy press, Amanda asks. So me and Becca probably have different points to our decision, but I would have to say that you can use others, but it is not nearly as easy as using the mini because no wood, no matter where you get it, is going to be perfectly, perfectly flat or not warped, especially over time or things like that. And it's just a lot uh, easier if your heat plate is smaller to get in the little grooves of the wood rather than having a nine by nine heat plate that you're really not going to be able to do that with. But it, it will work, um, but it won't be as as easy. Becca, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, that you covered pretty much everything that I would say. Wait. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, I have increase the temp up a little bit and I think it's working better. It's just hit or miss guys. You just, I mean, it, you just have to kind of um, see what works for you. Start out, you can always add more um, heat. So start out lower and then crank it up if it's not working for yeah. you. I think me and Becker are just scarred because I think we both have had instances of trying to get it done on a higher heat mm -hmm. and then it melting or us putting too much pressure and then w while it's uh still hot and not the you know the adhesive hasn't dried yet on that wood we like to move that around and make a mistake and have a little craft fail there so uh, it is better to start lower and work the your way center out. here is adhered i don't know why i'm having issues with it there we go you can see it's starting to get there it just likes to give me a hard time because I'm live. That's it, Becca. It yeah. knows that we're uh, we're in front of 208 people. He knows. What's he this knows. one's name? We have Jelly Bean and Peanut. Which mm -hmm. one is this one? Oh gosh, I don't know. We've mixed them around so much. We need to label them all. Oh, we should. Yeah, we, we should. have Jelly Bean. So, and guys, Peanut. how many how many Air Twos and Makers do we have here? 
Uh, we have four makers and, wait, no, we have seven makers and four Explorer 2s. We have started labeling them all because we go to connect to them um, and especially Bluetooth. Generally, we'll do a USB, but if you're connecting via Bluetooth, there are so many listed on our Bluetooth. Um, it's embarrassing. It is. So we have all of these notes on the back of our makers and Air 2s. And what, okay, and, and if you didn't know, your machine has a different code for Bluetooth than it does for USB. So like this one that we're using today, uh, the USB code is 301 and the uh, uh, Bluetooth code is 4CC7. So like we just could not remember. There are so many. And then I have my one at home. So I'm like, we ended up just labeling them all. Which was smart to do if you have more than one. Yeah. Or if you use more than one. Like, even my sister's, you know, sometimes I'll connect to hers at her house. And so, um, I uh, had to learn that number as well. Oh, my goodness. I don't know that I've ever had this much trouble. I don't know what the deal is. What kind of, what kind of HTV is this? I didn't even look. Well, I don't know, Becca. I did not even look. I bet this is Cricut. God, we're so, we just throw so much shade. Does it suck? It's cricket. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I honestly grabbed a piece of HTV that was big enough and I did not look and that was not smart. It very well could be. <sighs> very well could be. Could you tell anything when you were weaving it earlier? No. Because, well, I mean, it just stunk so bad because uh, of how small, like, the letters and stuff were. And look, the adhesive is coming out from underneath it really bad. And Caesar, Sizer, what do you say? Caesar, it's Caesar Easy Weed. Why do they name it that and spell it that know. way? I don't know. Who knows? I always say it wrong. I say Sizer. The adhesive is coming out from underneath it. Like leaking? Yeah, leaking. Oh. It has to be cricket. I ain't crying it. She is not like, coming I up. I agree with that. Okay. Let's, let's figure this out, friends. I, like, honestly, if I were not live, would probably peel this off and recut it. I'm not going to lie. Because this is just stinky. It is not normally this bad. It's not sticking at all, Rachel. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. What the heck? Okay. Like, all the adhesive came out from underneath it. Yeah. Do you think you had it too hot? Well, remember, it wasn't coming off at all. I just decreased it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, this is my first, like, huge live fail. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a fail because you, you, you've you done it successfully before. So I don't really think it qualifies as a fail if you if you did it fine Now we're going to do time. these little ones and see how it goes. Do you want me to go grab the finished one, though? Yeah, you can grab the okay. finished one. Okay, I'll be back, guys. Super fun. It's part of it, guys. Part of it. Um, yeah. I'm going to recommend using a different, I did decrease it, but I, honestly, like it was not, it wasn't heating up at all before. So fun times. Anyway. Let's look at the comments. Three green lights or two on the press. I had it on one to begin with. And then I heated it up to two because it wasn't sticking at all. And I couldn't see any adhesive like coming out. So that's why I, I kicked it up. And it apparently didn't like that either. So I don't know. Guys, I'm just not a fan of Cricut um, vinyls. I wish I could be. But every time I, I use them, and again, I don't know, no, 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 that this is Cricut. But um, every time I use them, they disappoint me. I don't know how to weed the fine, those fine letters yet. Oh, you need, where is it? You, oh, you have a pen pen tool, don't you, Melanie? That's how I used them. I don't normally use the pen pen tool just because I like the traditional, um, 
or is it this is my weeding tool of choice um, but it was so fine that the tip of the pin pin tool is a lot better um, it's a lot finer and you can get in there a lot easier and get those little pieces so highly recommend that I think we have a link to that in uh, down below on some of our most um, most used our favorite items if you don't have a pin pin tool grab one they're from I was gonna say 651 vinyl but they've changed their name to 143 or 143 vinyl um, we touched on that just a little bit last live but I don't think I got any answers what do you guys think is it 143 vinyl or 143 vinyl I am curious 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 thank you Rachel you're so welcome let's see so I have uh, decreased the temperature and I'm not okay. sure okay. it's helping. Okay, well, you know, as long as we, um, what do you call that? It's a scientific term, and I'm not, I'm not sign, sciencey. But you, uh, you do things to deduce that it's not that that's oh. wrong with it. Okay. You know, whatever that's called. Yeah, I like, I like where you're going with we that. We removed the too hot variable. Yeah. Yeah, not, not sticking at all. This has been a fun live, friends. Look at that. She coming right off. And it's cool than everything. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, that's, Very interesting. That's so fun. Do you remember getting it off of a roll or was it in a no, scrap it wasn't, bin? Yeah, it was in the bin. If, oh, Becca. Oh, I know. Becca. I know. I'm going to go in there and throw all of that away. Oh, Rachel. I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, Megan, process of elimination. Thank you. Thank you. See, sometimes I don't know the words, but see, I have 205 amazing people that do know the words. Yes, I love that. So, process of an elimination. Yep, that's it. That's it. Okay, guys, we're going to make magic happen here and pretend like this never happened. And I'm going to show you. You want me to, like, blur the camera real quick or something? <laughs> just be like, hey. This one. Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm actually not embarrassed because there's nothing I could do about that. No, because, Becca, you did it successfully mm -hmm. the first time. So it's not like yeah. it's a fail. It's it wasn't, it wasn't user error. Yeah. Yeah, Barbara said I would take it off and recut it. That's totally what I would do. Yeah. And so that's why I'm giving up, friends. Yeah. Um, there we go. There we go. What have... Would using alcohol have helped? That's a great question. Um, I don't use alcohol on wood because, uh, first of all, I don't want to, you know, mess up the color of it potentially with alcohol. Um, and this is HTV, so yeah. you typically do that yeah. with vinyl. But listen, That's I a great absolutely thought, adore great thought. that you have that in your hand. Yes. I want that to be your first thought if a project is not sticking. Yeah. Uh, so good job there. Please do that. For sure. Uh, Miss Elizabeth, helpful for all of us. Yes. You guys are amazing at letting us know that while we th might think that something's a project fail, that you guys do still learn from it. So. But look, I mean, you can you can see this is HTV, and you saw how the adhesive was just like mm -hmm. melting out underneath it. It, I mean, you don't see it at all on this. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, and also, guys, I think honestly um, that HTV goes bad after a while. I think it does too. And listen, I got I know that we all know how to iron on wood. We yeah. have eight videos, eight. Mm -hmm. not counting this one on how to iron on wood so if you need help with that please let us know but this is just another one of those amazing iron on wood projects that you guys will have a ton of success with well and honestly like for me this this live was more about showing you guys in design space how to put the cut file together and uh, you know size it and all that stuff so I did that part of my job at least and I've had a lot of fun with you guys if nothing else so I'm not counting up as a total loss no, no. Uh, by any means. Um, do we have any questions about anything? Not that I can see. Anything at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, but also that's another great part back into why we make one pre the lab. Yes. Because looking here, guys, we can actually show you that where we were going with that. We can show you the finished project instead of just saying, sorry, guys, try and imagine it done. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So fun. How can I prevent HTV going bad? So I personally, it's just personal, think that there's a lot of factors that play into HTV going bad. Uh, we ha once had our studio in the garage and mm -hmm. when we weren't in it, 
it was not heated or cooled and it was very wet in there and moist as garages are i think that temperature and what do you, what do you call that not do what do you call that humidity, humidity. Mm -hmm. thank you got all the words i feel like temperature and humidity are the biggest factors in it going bad so definitely uh pay close attention to that if you if you craft in like a she shed outside or in your garage or something but normally they're fine yeah for a while. becky yeah. anything else that you'd like to add no i no, totally agree mm -hmm. you covered it um sharon says do you have a schedule for the summit um we do have one have we sent it out i have no idea Email customer service, hi at makersgonnalearn.com, and see if they can hook you up. We do have one. Rachel put it together for us. She's amazing. Um, Kat had to look up where the charcuterie board came from. Basically, it's meat's root response to a cheese board. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> look at that. Rachel just posted... You did the Caesar, right? Yeah, uh, we had the wood burning warrior said, "What uh, so best HTV question mark?" Yeah. And this is the HTV. Caesar that we is need. our favorite yeah. for sure. It I, I love that it comes in matte and not like yeah. you can have glossy or yeah. matte, which I really appreciate when brands do that because uh, some projects you wanted to have a different look to it. This one is it, matte. Yeah, it weeds incredibly. Uh, it cuts really awesome. We love it. It doesn't tear or go bad or anything like that. Um, nearly as quickly. I have a hard time weeding out adhesive glitter. Oh. I can't get it to ever pull up with my Throw transfer type of suggestions. Throw it away. Like, I love glitter, guys. I mean, I am a massive fan of glitter, but... Guys, the glitter vinyl. Mm. No, I like... No, 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 no. Let's be clear. And, I, guys, I, I hate that this is just a trash session here. Cricut glitter vinyl is of the devil. Yeah. Um, Oracal, I'll bring it in here right now and prove it to you because I've made a lot of projects with it. Oracal has a glitter vinyl, or not Oracal. Yeah, what, what's the new name of it? 432? One fourth. <laughs> one four three. One four three, what, whatever it's called. One yeah, four three vinyl, vinyl. Has a brand and it has glitter vinyl and it's like glossy on the top, but you can still see the glitter. So your uh, transfer tape will actually stick to it. Whereas Cricut's, it's like gritty like the glitter is. Yeah. You cannot get transfer tape to stick to that. Not at all. We love glitter HTV. We use it all the time, but Cricut glitter vinyl, you. I've never been able to use it ever. Kat said, I hate glitter that is not HTV. I totally Amen. agree, Kat. Amen, like, I, Kat. Glitter, glitter HTV is totally fun to work with. It's, Even yeah. Cricut's glitter HTV yeah. I'm fine yeah. with. Uh -huh. um, but, ooh, it's yeah. rough. Yeah. Agreed. Carol, thank you for making us feel better about our craft fails. Well, you are certainly welcome. I am pleased to make a fool of myself on YouTube for you guys. It happens. It really does. Uh, we're human for sure. But I, like, honestly, cannot imagine a more understanding group of people than you all. Um, so it doesn't bother me to come on and uh, potentially have these spells in front of you guys. You guys are gracious, um, understanding, and I, I really appreciate it. I honestly do. Um, any other questions, guys? Again, if you haven't grabbed your summit tickets or if you aren't a member of Makers Gonna Learn and want to have access to all of these amazing cut files, fonts, um, all these amazing people. Oh my gosh, these people are regulars in our private Facebook group over on Facebook. Um, and they help you troubleshoot all sorts of amazing thing, or not amazing, terrible. If you have terrible issues with your Cricut or Design Space, they help you troubleshoot those. Um, we a lot of times will pop on and help but a lot of times before we can even answer you guys have several different answers um it's just amazing our facebook is group awesome. is fantastic yeah. yes yeah i appreciate it i love it i know you guys do too yeah. um in addition to all of that we also have our free commercial license which helps you legally sell um products using our cut files and fonts and we have three free e-courses for you guys that help you learn design space help you learn your cricket and help you build your business through your die cut machine so all of that amazing goodness is available to you for a fee of 197 dollars per year so it's billed annually you don't have to worry about it again it's actually 191 191.88 you were correct i keep getting some i save you those six dollars <laughs> our maybe yeah something like that i'm bad at math don't judge don't judge don't do it <laughs> Oh, Gabrielle, you're like the quarterback that fumbled. Your game is not long. That's, Thank that's you. a good analogy. That's the cutest. You're so sweet. Technically, you already scored because look. 
you like you already what yeah. do you what let me wait let me try and go along with this you already made the touchdown oh okay. did it woohoo the game winning pass there you, yeah see couldn't have came up with yeah that. carol one four three same uh, same number of syllables as i like I you. You. it's yeah, also yeah. like in the same number of letters yeah yeah, yeah. that's why I think is yeah. because it's the number letter. I don't know. Susan, yeah. Becca, and Rachel are keeping it real. We try always. Always, we'll we'll tell you like it is. You'll if anything, we're honest. I love that about. Uh, well, do I love that about us? I'm gonna go with a yeah. I think I, I think do I love do. it. We're honest. Yeah. I think I do. Anyway, Rachel's dropped all the links that you need for this amazing community to be involved with this amazing community. I can't imagine, I can't imagine my life without it now, honestly. Like I wake up, like the last thing that I look at before I go to bed is our fingers gonna learn Facebook group. I just love it. It's just so uplifting and amazing. So, wonderful. So you fumbled on the two point conversion. Look at Megan. Dear heaven She's above She's like a Megan. football pro. I, I, I didn't understand most of those words. I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna go on, go on. I love it. So. Here's my problem with football. I love football, but I, I, if I'm going to watch football, I want to, like, really pay attention. And generally when I go to, like, a football game or I, like the Super Bowl or some big SEC game or whatever, there's friends around and they just want to chat, which is admirable. I or mean, like, eat. My love language is quality time, so I totally understand that. But if I'm watching football, just leave me alone. Because then I, get, then I get distracted and I'm like, who even has the ball? Who's winning? Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Can't? I, I can't. Mm. So I love it and I hate it. Um, you guys are so sweet. I'm just reading your comments. Super sweet. Guys, if we don't have any other questions, then we're going to skedaddle. Uh, today's Wednesday. Tanner will be here tomorrow. Tanner and Rachel will be here tomorrow giving you an awesome peek at our launch. Tomorrow's font launch, yeah? Ye There's some yes. cute projects. Super cute projects. Oh, I'm skimming through Facebook. We have a, a viewer that says, Heck, just about 20 minutes ago, I melted some white HTV all over my mini press. Thank you, quote unquote, shiny side. <laughs> See, you're keeping it real too. I and we love, love you that. for that. Thank you so much. I just like the hot dogs at the stadium. I hate football though. I would go to eat. I also like to dress up for them. Although, you know, around, we're in Morristown, <laughs> so like right an hour outside of Knoxville. And so we're like all massive UT fans. Even if you hate UT, you're a UT fan. I don't know why. It's GBO. just it's part of it. Yeah. Our UT orange is the ugliest orange I've ever seen. Literally in my life. hideous. Horrible. It's bad. And my husband loves it. It's like his favorite color. He's super tacky. But um, <laughs> he is. I love Wayne. <laughs> He's so different the other day. Because I always wear like black or gray. Yeah, or yeah. Green. It's like I like you in a lot of color. I'm like I know, but your taste is horrible, so I don't care. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, I still, like, even though I hate UT Orange, I, there's something about, like, getting all dressed up and, like, white and orange and mm -hmm. gray and mm -hmm. just being super tacky with everything. To go, yeah. There's with just your, something about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I would go to eat. And then I would be the person who, like, would go with the crowd. So if all the people on my side were like, woohoo, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. And would really not know what was going on while I was eating my hot dog. That'd be me. That's me. <laughs> Oh, one day when I, I went to a game, I was young, man, and I had to go to the bathroom. The line was forever, and then like a whole inning, inning. That's baseball. Inning. What? <laughs> that's baseball. I'm a baseball lover. What do you say? Quarter? A whole? Wait, what do you say? What is that? Well, there's whole... halves. There's quarter. There's quarters in in football, right? He, uh, what, are you really asking me? I was a basketball player. Then I was a soccer player and a volleyball player, and now we do baseball. And so I'm not, I, a segment of the football game we was go. over. Good, good. And I, when I left, I went up the steps, and apparently I got lost. I don't know. When I came back to my seat, I was coming up the steps. <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so that's how much I left football. Quarter, Megan. Yeah. Megan knows everything Sweet. about football specifically. Good. Probably, probably, too. probably a lot of other things, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, look at them. They're all like, yeah, it's a quarter. Yeah, it's you a quarter. Numbness. <laughs> <laughs> I know the most about basketball. An inning. That's I'm for an inning in football. An inning. Back it's been so long since I've been able to watch any sports. I'm going to blame it on COVID. Everything else is blamed on COVID. It, we can blame COVID for everything for about one more year if 
if not longer. I think longer. I think longer. Some of these kids are going to be blamed from COVID forever. Like, you were consumed in COVID, so. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Lord. We went to my grandmother's yesterday, and she said, now, she's 84, okay? She is the type who loves life but has also come to terms with that she is so ready to go. If God took her today, she'd be so thankful. So she said, she popped off with this. We're like, yeah, we hate wearing these masks. And she's like, yeah, it's getting old. But let me tell you, you guys, like, point to us like we're losers. She's like, you guys are going to have to deal with a whole new world. Thank goodness I won't help. I won't be here for it. Like, I'll be gone, thank goodness. You guys will never be the same. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Thanks, Mamma. I love Mamma. Yeah, she was just like, yeah, you guys are going to be living in this crazy world forever. Thank goodness I'm not. I'll be up in heaven. I will say, my sister and I have a really sick, twisted sense of humor. And one thing that we've said for years and years and years is that we cannot wait to get old because we just want to say whatever the whatever we're thinking. It it's a true thing. And then people will just be like, she's old. She just says what she thinks. Sorry. But like, I'm 33 and I'm getting to that point already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know. My mamma used to say, every time one of, like, me or my siblings would tell her that we were pregnant or adopting or having another child, whatever, she'd be like, why? I just don't know why anyone would want to bring a baby into this cruel world. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, cup half full there. Yes. We were like, well, mamma, we have to have, there has to be good people in the world to raise good children to make the world not bad. Oh, my goodness. She, But then she loved our kids, but she was like total Eeyore. None of us wanted to <laughs> tell her about our kids. Aww. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, friends, I love talking to you guys. You yeah. guys are super fun. Thank you so much for tuning in today on this video. Um, somehow I got sidetracked about talking about the live tomorrow, but definitely come back 1.30 tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, and view our projects for the Cup Pound Launch. Tanner will be here. You know what? He may, you may be even able to talk. To, if you haven't seen the projects for Summit, I bet you could talk him into giving you a preview. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bet so. So, if you guys don't have any more questions or comments or chatter, then I'm going to get out of here yeah. and work. Yeah. Maybe maybe Beck will get her storm later on this evening. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, bless her heart. Well, you know, we're from the South, so we say bless, bless her heart all the time. That's normal here. We're, we're just, ooh, yeah. It means a lot of different things. She's so. not too smart. Bless her heart. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. It softens the blow. When it is does. the summit? Fan fantastic question. Summit is this Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday. I feel like we've been talking about the summit for a long time. And it's weird that it's actually here. Um, so this Saturday and Sunday, it yeah. will start at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you'll be crafting all day Saturday and Sunday. So all weekend from the comfort of your own home with us or you'll just be watching um i've said it before we have a couple of different type of summit viewers some craft along some take notes some some just watch some never do the crafts which is hysterical to me we have several who do that um but we would love to have you join and so rachel dropped that link go ahead and grab a ticket uh come enjoy some amazing giveaways i know we're giving away an air two we're gonna give away amazon gift cards we're gonna give away coach handbags we're gonna give away other stuff. I don't know. It's going to be super stuff. fun. Fun, yeah. fun. So fun. Thank you guys so much. We will see you tomorrow. Now we're just with the Facebook friends. Becca's, Becca. <laughs>